Hi, and welcome to the history lessons in the Wikipedia world. This is the third lesson and last that we'll be doing on Guernica and the horrors of the Spanish Civil War. And finally, we are going to look into the painting that has this name, that it's worldwide famous, expressing and denouncing the horrors of war and the horrors that Guernica endured and that we've seen during the last two lessons. We start with a quote from Pablo Picasso talking about his artwork. He says, quote, My whole life as an artist has been nothing more than a continuous struggle against reaction and the death of art. In the picture I'm painting, which I shall call Guernica, I am expressing my horror of the military case in which now plundering Spain into an ocean of misery and death. This is what he wants to transmit with his art. But let's just get the technical part through. If you've never seen it in real life, the Guernica is impressive. We're talking about a very large painting, 3.5 meters in height and 7.8 meters in wide. The painting is painted in oil and monochrome colors of black, gray and white. He was using this monochromatic palette of grey, black and white because this reflects his initial encounter with the news. He got the news about the horrors in Guernica through newspaper reports and photographs in black and white. It also suggested the position of the eyewitness to this report, like if he was making you the observer of the painting, also the witness of this news that struck him so hard to create this painting. The, also the sharp alteration of black and white contrasts across the painting. It creates some dr more dramatic intensity as the visual energy of movement is so contrasted and different. But why and how did he paint this? Well, in 1936, Picasso was asked by the newly elected Spanish Republican government to paint an artwork for the Spanish pavilion at the 1937 Paris's World Fair. The official theme of the exposition, though, was a celebration of modern technology. Yet Picasso painted an overtly political painting with this subject that until now he had so really showed little interest. And what happened? Well, on May the 1st, 1937, the news of the atrocity reached Paris. Eyewitnesses' reports filled the front pages of local and international newspapers. Picasso and others sympathetic to the Republican government and his homeland were horrified by the reports of devastation and death. Things that we've seen until now, remember the last lesson, 
how Guernica was just annihilated down to most buildings destroyed. Just imagine when these pictures arrived in Paris and were shown to Picasso, his home country was going through this horror. For Picasso then, Guernica was a visual response. It was the tools he had to make a memorial of this brutal massacre. And after hundreds of sketches that you can find online, by the way, this enormous painting was done and delivered to the Spanish Fair Pavilion and became one of the main attractions, actually, as the horrors had been through going through the newspapers of Europe the moment people knew about this painting, they went to see it. Then accompanying the painting, they just didn't leave it just at this. They also put documentary films, newsreels and graphic photographs of the fascist brutalities in the Civil War. They made this opportunity to have a space in Paris to make a cry of help and denounce the horrors the nationalist faction was creating during the Civil War. Both sides are always brutal in a war, but what happened in Guernica, as we've seen, was out of this world. Of course, rather than the typical celebration of technology that people saw and were expecting in other pavilions, they went into the Spanish pavilion and were shocked confronting the suffering of the Spanish people. At the end, though, when the fair ended, the Republican forces were in dire need, as we saw, of help. So they sent the Guernica on an international tour to create awareness of the war and raise funds for the Spanish refugees. It travelled the world for 19 years and then was loaned for safekeeping in the Museum of Art in New York. Picasso himself refused to allow it to return to Spain until the country, with his own words, enjoyed public liberties and democratic institutions. This only happened finally in 1981. So it took quite a lot of time for the Guernica to finally go back to Spain and now, if you want to see it, it's permanently in the museum Reina Sofia in the capital, Madrid. But let's look a bit closer to the painting. What is represented in this painting? Well, we have to mention that the Guernica has quite a degree of contradictory uh, interpretations. This uh, extends especially to the bull and the horse that we'll see, because these are two elements that are reoccurring in Picasso's artwork. So historians and art historians have studied them thoroughly and tried to picture why and what is the role in this painting. There are two animals, for instance, that are very important characters in the Spanish culture. If you've ever seen a bullfight, uh, those are one of the folklore uh, icons of Spanish culture. A bullfight will have 
the bull and the bullfighter. But if you're not familiar with it, uh, you also have the picador. That is someone that's on a horse, one or two, and that will also go to fight the bull. And normally, um, at the end, will uh, throw, well, throw, um, stab the animal also with uh, some small swords. So there's always horses around in a bullfight. They have two different roles. One works with the humans and the other is a victim in the um, arena. But don't take this uh, immediate sim symbolism as the bull as a victim because this is not the idea that Picasso was using. This was just to exemplify what a bullfight is and why these two animals are so relevant to the Spanish culture. Also, um, it is said that Picasso saw this bull as a major motive of destruction here. We'll see that there's more than one bull in this picture, even if you can't see it right away. What we do see, however, is that this bull here represents the fascism, because Picasso said in his words that it meant brutality and darkness. Picasso didn't want to explain much about the painting. So that's why so many people have tried hard to find the meaning in it. The bull here, as we see, is depicted with a dark body and a white head. It appears probably to be like stunned or shocked at the horror that it's surrounding him already. We'll see that this, this is the main and the most easy to see bull, but we'll find another one that's hidden inside. Then just underneath we have a mother with a dead child. She is clutching the dead child's head facing the sky with this anguish cry in her eyes and the eyes that are shaped as tears. The image is meant to resemble uh, classic Catholic images of the Virgin Mary and uh, Jesus in her arms. But this one is a child and is tainted by war. You see the injuries in her, the mother's arms and the child. Then there is one element that is very difficult to see at first. This is a pigeon. The pigeon you find it between the bull and the horse. And it's not very clear the symbol here. It appears behind this flash of white. It's sometimes represent, um, interpreted as a representation of the broken piece. In other sketches, uh, of previous sketches of this painting, we see the pigeon going in or coming out of the horse's wound. So I also um, encourage you to try and find the meaning that calls uh, to you of this painting, knowing now what you know about the horrors that happened in Guernica. You can also do this exercise. 
underneath everything there is a dead soldier the soldier is made up of body parts you don't see the whole body you only see pieces it's a head one of his arms and the left forearm in one of the hands the soldier is holding a broken sword and from the broken sword there's a flower the flower could be as a ray of hope amongst all this destruction you see it also that it's fading away you don't know if it's there or if it's just going because there is no hope another that was quite curious that strikes you is this light bulb this light bulb or sun in some interpretations it said that as it all was also was in the uh, pavilion of technological advancement that it represents this the technological advancement also though being tested during the Guernica bombings let's remember Germans and Italians were testing the Air Force and practicing on Guernica if you also use some Spanish here um, it is curious that our name for light bulb is bombilla that comes also that um, has the part bomb in it finally one of the main characters of this painting is a horse it's in the center of the painting and it looks like it's falling down it has been you can see here a lance or weapon that is been through it also you see a big deep wound in the center of him the rest of the body is overlapped by other images that it said that also in turn can form a human skull depending on how you see it this mouth open you can see as a cry for help a cry from suffering it's experiencing sometimes as contraposition from the bull it is said that the horse represents the people the wounded and suffering people of Guernica here we have another female figure it's called the kneeling or wounded woman her leg here appears clearly dislocated or broken a big mass of just horrific injuries she's bleeding from the knee but she's trying probably to stop the flow of the blood but her face is just in state of shock she doesn't uh, seem to understand where she's going or what she is doing not even feeling the pain not knowing what has stuck struck her and everything that's going around we have another woman here this one is quite iconic too the woman with the oil lamp her face uh, seems to be in the center of the picture and her oil lamp illuminating also she seems to be in a state of shock 
and incredulity of what has happened. Coming out here and seeing all the surroundings, all the horrors of Guernica, it's been considered that she would be like a ghostly representation of the Spanish Republic, of the Spanish government, not understanding the horrors that are happening in her country. Here finally we've got another horrific figure, the imploring man also with the eyes in shape of tears. He seems to be maybe um, pleading to the sky, perhaps the German planes above to say stop the bombing. It has been uh, also, it has become quite a powerful representation of the anti-war feeling in this painting. This man just asking please, please stop. And here you can see the whole picture with the bull, the crying mother, the parts of the soldier, the pigeon, the hidden pigeon, the wounded horse, the injured woman, the imploring woman, uh, sorry, the uh, woman with the oil lamp and the imploring man. But there's a couple more symbols hidden in this picture. Many more, but we'll just give you a couple. One is here. We see the head, actually, of a bull. If you follow the picture and the lines, you can make out the horns. This bull here would be either muzzling the hand of the soldier or hurting and with its horns going into the horse from underneath. This wouldn't be that strange because that's what happens sometimes in bullfighting. The horses are killed or injured by the bulls. And in the nose of the horse it's been said that it represents a skull, a skull for the death and devastation that happened here. And finally we see the bull and its tail. It's not a normal tail, it represents a fire and the smoke that was coming out of the town after the bombing. Just to finish, in 1940, in Paris, uh, Paris did fall later on, as you may know, under Nazi occupation. And a Gestapo officer visited Picasso's studio, and it's allegedly said that the exchange went like this. The Gestapo officer asked Picasso, showing him a picture of the Guernica and thoroughly worried about what it represented. And he asked him, did you do that? Picasso answered, no, you did. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. This is the last part of Guernica and the horrors in the Spanish Civil War. And I hope to see you in the next lessons.